I want to be corrupt because apparently everyone on TikTok is corrupt because everyone's been recommending this book. Um, you don't just have a cover like this unless someone ends up like them at the end of the book. I don't think I will ever forgive TikTok for recommending this book to me ever. I'm never going to forgive it for this. <laughs> So I am going to be doing a reading vlog of Penelope Douglas's Corrupt. I have not read a single one of her works before. This was my first time buying a Penelope Douglas book and I'm really excited but I'm also like really scared because I've been seeing this book a lot on TikTok um, and I haven't really known too much about what it is really. I thought while I explained um, a little bit about what the book is or what I know what the book is about like for my information I thought I could put on a face mask um this mask is probably gonna make me break out my face is already pretty broken out so I mean how how much worse could it really get so I've been seeing a lot of tiktokers talk about how this book um is very like crazy intense like there's a lot of plot twists I think I haven't really like done too much research into what the book is about i kind of just know like by looking at the synopsis that i saw probably like two weeks ago like vaguely looked it over um i think i might know what it's about but i'm probably wrong so what i got from the synopsis is that it's this girl i think she is a freshman in college possibly and i think she had a long time crush on her brother's best friend but then her brother's best friend either goes to college or goes to the military, something like that. I can't really tell you. Had a big crush on this dude. He dipped because, you know, he had a life and yeah. I think she went some time without him or something. And then she found this new dude while she was in college who she got a crush on and sparks started flying all over the place. But then homeboy brother's best friend comes back and then sis is like oh shoot well now here we have a situation where i need to choose or something like that this is my synopsis on a book that i have read about probably once and a half i'm very excited to read this i'm very intrigued actually as to what this is i saw a lot of um, other booktubers on goodreads writing reviews on this book and kind of giving it a rating and it was very mixed people either liked it or didn't like it but were like confused by the ending so we're gonna see how this plays out i'm not planning on reading too much tonight for some reason i feel like i'm gonna go through this book pretty quickly i think people that have read penelope douglas books it's said that are also fans of colleen hoover's books and I've heard that Colleen Hoover is a very controversial author because of the content she writes. So, I mean, hey, I've never read a Colleen Hoover book, but I've seen a lot of videos of people talking about books like November 9 and It Ends With Us. And I think, actually, I added It Ends With Us to my Goodreads um, TBR, so catch that video sometime this month. I thought we'd go with corrupt because first of all that title that title am i gonna be corrupt by the end of this video who freaking knows you know do i want to be corrupt after reading everything in this book i'm gonna go with yeah i want to be corrupt because apparently everyone on tiktok is corrupt because everyone's been recommending this book so i finished applying this mask um good thing i didn't stain this carpet because you would never see videos from me ever again if I did. I think I'm going to leave this mask on for maybe 30 minutes. You're probably not supposed to leave it on for 30 minutes, but... I think this book is supposed to be like a contemporary... Romance novel? I don't know. This cover is so confusing. I know that this cover just got updated because I went to Barnes & Noble's and there was this cover. I'll insert a picture of it here, I guess. And it is a black cover with like this like plume of red smoke or something i don't really i couldn't it looked very sensual let me tell you that it kind of just looked like red silk on a black background but there's a new cover and i just don't know how this cover is going to contribute to 
the story if it is a contemporary YA not YA if it's a contemporary romance novel is someone gonna end up like them I don't know but I am very excited to find out um you don't just have a cover like this unless someone ends up like them at the end of the book I'm getting scared because like what is that all about and it's a romance novel like that doesn't make a lot of sense sweaty so we're gonna figure out what's going on here I have my watcher and i'm just gonna sit here in this little like corner of my room and just read for i'm gonna go with 30 minutes i'm gonna read for 30 minutes and then i'm gonna check in um to give you an update of my feelings for this book so i will check back in in about 30 minutes look like one of the homies on the front cover i have officially hit my 30 minute mark of reading corrupt and i think i have a pretty good feel for how this book is gonna go i was a little um enlightened while i was reading this because i thought that it was about a brother and a best friend but it's about two brothers one of the brothers is actually going to the navy i believe rika is intrigued by one of the brothers his name is michael he's older and he plays um college basketball and then the younger brother trevor is kind of like her longtime best friend who has always had a crush on her and she just doesn't feel the same way towards the guy she's in this predicament where he wants her she doesn't want him she's like ecstatic ecstatic to go to college and get the hell away from this dude just by reading a little bit of trevor's character i already dislike him like immediately i just disliked him like he didn't sit right and then he did some stupid stuff that i was just like okay now i really don't like you so far the book is reading like a wattpad book and that's not to say that it's bad or anything i actually really like reading wattpad books because they go by really quick and they like really get you like really easily like you get into them really easily and that's so far what's happening from the beginning i knew these people were gonna be rich like as soon as i read like the first two pages i'm like okay this is a story about rich people and there was this really uh, funny line that i bookmarked in here that i tabbed so this is a conversation between uh, rika and trevor or whatever and trevor's trying to be like cute and funny or whatever with rika and she's kind of just not into it this is trevor speaking i didn't know what i was going to do if he didn't show up tonight and then he continued by saying throw rocks at your window serenade you maybe bring you flowers candy a new car then rika replies i have a new car and then the homie responds by saying i mean a real car and then the next couple of lines apparently rika it's discovered that rika has a tesla so a tesla is not a real car um according to trevor because it's an electric car so oh my god he's so funny you know like uh, girl like you're so funny something that caught me instantly when i first opened up this book so it's after the playlist in the beginning of the book so we have a playlist here um this is i think the first book that i've ever bought that has a playlist in it and i think this also added to the wattpad-esque feeling i was getting from this book because a lot of wattpad books have playlists done by the authors which is cool i for one have not listened to a single one of these songs i don't think so it's after the playlist and there's this quote right here and it says you are my creator but i am your master and it's a quote from frankenstein and okay so assist is bringing in some gothic literature aspects i was instantly intrigued so i am going to go ahead and shower right now and then i will come back and check in with you all in a little bit please don't mind um the pimple cream um it's a part of my nightly ritual, um, if you will. So I am currently filming this clip at 2 in the morning. I did what I said I was going to do. I showered and I read more of Corrupt and 
what I thought, what I was worried was gonna happen, happened. I put two and two together before reading this book that I felt that Corrupt was gonna be a book that wasn't good in theory, but was a book that I just wouldn't be able to put down. I don't know where to start. I've tabbed a couple of things so far. Um, this clip isn't gonna be too long. I just wanted to update you guys on what I've read so far. Um, I am at page 155. And all I can say is that I feel like I'm going through this book super quickly, even though it doesn't look like I've made much of a dent. I still feel like this has gone really, really quickly. But just as a refresher, um, I had originally thought this book was something completely different. I thought it was about a girl falling for her um, brother's best friend, and it is literally not that. <laughs> this book is far from that. I actually wish that's what I was reading, but sadly, it is not. Side note, there's a lot of typos in this book that I've discovered, and I feel like as readers, we always give ourselves like a little pat on the back when we find those but dang girl there's a lot of them in here trevor and his older brother michael are a part of the christ family but erica has never really felt anything for trevor besides friendship honestly she has other guy friends too but she's just been closer to trevor but she's never seen trevor in that way like he's like super friend zoned but he clearly doesn't get the message erica has a really big crush on trevor's older brother michael but not because he's like, oh my gosh, like he's like her older brother. No, she thinks he's very mysterious and very brooding and she's very sexually attracted to him. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing or anything, but I'm just like trying to give you all the details. Erica is very attracted to this man who very much makes it clear to her that he wants nothing to do with her. He's very rude to her and she knows, she acknowledges that he's being rude and disrespectful yet doesn't do anything to stop her feelings for him it's so weird and it's very toxic too as i am reading it it's just getting progressively more toxic there was an event that happened three years ago in the story where erica and trevor were still in high school and michael and his cronies his group of friends that were obviously much older than them had graduated and had gone to college um, are considered like the town's badasses for some reason. I don't, this doesn't happen in real life, but okay. There was an event that happened three years ago um, and I thought I heard someone walking towards the door. <laughs> My house has ghosts in it. There was an event that happened three years ago that involved Erica somehow getting Michael and his friends into a lot of trouble and his friends went to jail because of this. Something happened that caused them to go to jail and for some reason it is Erica's fault. They put the blame on Erica and because of this, years later, they're trying to get revenge on Erica for what she did. Even though I'm pretty sure sis didn't do anything if they were the ones that ended up in jail, but okay. Michael was the only one who didn't end up going to jail. He is still playing basketball for college and it's kind of funny because somehow somehow she ended up in the same apartment building as him i want to do a trigger warning right now for sa because there's a lot of that in this book and it isn't treated the way it should be treated and through your flashback that erica has there is a scene between one of michael's friends and her mind you she is 16 at the time and michael's friends are above 18 like they are not minors at all but that's besides the point i'm just trying to kind of paint a picture as to how disgusting what happened was erica was blindfolded because michael was trying to see how tough she really was um at this very weird party that they were at that they arranged with his cronies i guess for the whole school she ended up being there and one of his friends got very very close to her and began inappropriately inappropriately touching erica and she was very uncomfortable it was very awful to read really and then afterwards it was not even treated as sexual assault at all it almost seemed like a rite of passage of how tough erica was and how she could take being mishandled it was very disturbing to read and honestly it kind of 
turned me off to reading this book because it had a good story like the story so far is very interesting and like you want to keep reading what's happening but after that i was like okay i'm seeing where this is going and it's just it's not a good it's not a good road to take sexual assault should always be taken very seriously and so far it just hasn't been taken seriously at all erica brushed it off as if nothing had happened and that's not what would happen in reality and i don't know if the characters are gonna have any development at all so far they haven't had any so i'm kind of waiting for that so far this book has been one where you just want to keep reading it it's i'm, I'm telling you it's like a wattpad book like you just read it until you end up finishing it at like three in the morning and you're like how did i get here like how did i get here but i was interested while i got here you know what i'm saying i think i've seen a couple other um booktubers talk about books like these being very enticing to read because they're so terrible and tragic that it's like you can't stop reading it because you want to know how terrible it actually gets and i think that's something that i've been experiencing with this book i don't think the book is terrible i have hope that this book might turn around there's a reason why it doesn't have that bad of a rating on goodreads and i'm sure it's because there's some aspects of the book that people did enjoy i know there are some aspects about the book that i enjoy so far the fact that it's very simple to read it's a very quick read and it's it, it's very gripping as well so i think that's one of the aspects that i really like about this book but um let's not let's not act like sexual assault isn't a big deal because it is and this book has been brushing it off pretty well as if it's nothing and i don't think that's a very good thing you want readers especially younger readers to have in their minds and have incorporated into their philosophy as they move on in life but definitely this book has had me going through it so far i've been on a lot of rants um i have been on a couple of facetime rants since we've last spoke in tonight i'm going to read a little bit more of this tonight um and sleep it's super late right now i think i'm going to start doing just regular night checks when it comes to reading because that's where i typically get most of my reading done i typically just read a lot at night um or read a lot throughout the day and then gather my thoughts at night so that is something that i'm going to be doing and i will see you all tomorrow castaways we are castaways ahoy there I swear I am going to need therapy after this book. This is not an official update by any means, but I just had to tell you all how I was feeling about Corrupt and I wasn't kidding when I said that I was going to need therapy after this because boy is this book toxic? I considered very much that this book was going to be dealing with a lot of things and I thought that it might work through um, certain traits of a toxic relationship or even a relationship that was heading down that path and maybe have a good ending but I do not see how this book can have a good ending. I'm very much avoiding talking about the smut that is very prevalent in this book but I will get there I promise. I don't know how this book will redeem itself um, based off of its toxic qualities. Every single relationship in this book is toxic and I don't know if the author's trying to make it seem like it's okay like everything that's happening in this book is okay but there are a lot of things that are not okay in this book right now. I was up till like 3 a.m. reading last night and I just needed to give this quick update because I need you to know my thoughts on this. The book is centered on abuse. It's so weird to call the things that are happening in this book anything other than abuse but it honestly is that's what it's seeming like that's really what it's seeming like i don't i can't describe it any other way i'm trying hard to find the good in the characters michael and like his friends and his dad like i'm trying to find redeeming qualities 
in them, but I really can't find them sweaty. I really can't. Like, they're gone. They're nowhere to be seen. They were never created. They were never intended to be created, okay? And it's not even like a toxic where it's like, it can be overlooked. It's like, it's so aggressive and in your face that it's like, you literally like, can't, you can't forgive anyone for that. Like you literally can't, like there's unforgivable things in this book. Like regarding the smut in this book, it's hard to enjoy it and feel like the characters are having a connection when it's harbored from abuse. Like if, like, I don't know if like I'm making sense by saying that. Rika and Michael's relationship, the intimate moments they share together, they don't even feel intimate, if that makes any sense. They don't feel real. They definitely feel something for each other, but to say that they have feel like a strong connection to one another that they have feelings towards one another they love each other's personality they love little qualities about them they love their passions and ambitions i can't say that rika and michael have that in their relationship i can't say that at all their relationship is solely based off of sex that's all their relationship has and that's all they think about when they think of one another i don't necessarily think that's a good thing to just base a relationship off of that we don't know what rika is studying in college for, for some reason like we don't know her major uh, we don't know any of her passions all we know is that michael likes playing basketball and that that's his career to play professional basketball but that's it that's all we know and i know that people are gonna be like dude like just enjoy the smut for what it is but it's hard to enjoy something when it's when it doesn't feel real that's that's all i'm gonna say my guessing right now is that they're not gonna end up together by the end of the book i just feel it they're not right for each other the things that michael has done to rika will definitely be unforgivable i just like feel it but again i can't say for sure i'm currently on chapter 18 right now and i have tabbed a lot of things um and i do want to go over everything that i tabbed in because everything that i tabbed in is very important i feel like this story could be way worse right like there's so many other bad things that could be happening in this book i think it's the characters and their portrayal of certain tropes in novels of like the older brother or the bad boy like i feel like those tropes have limits when you surpass those limits you reach a dangerous point of representing characters in novels that translating to real life people and having young people or just impressionable people reading these things and accepting it as something that is so thrilling and so fun and romantic when in reality it's abuse so i think there's a very fine line between a popular trope and dangerous reality so i think that that's something that people should take in consideration when reading this i'll most likely give another update on this book either tomorrow or the day after because i have a lot of homework that i have to get done all right i will see you all in a little bit i just wanted to get this update out that way you know my thoughts on this book and hopefully my thoughts have settled more um once i give my final update on this book because boy is this crazy also i literally forgot to mention that i hate the horsemen they literally belong in the ninth circle no questions asked no questions needed um okay bye i can't believe that happened so i just finished reading corrupt <laughs> i can't believe i read that book <laughs> I don't think I will ever forgive TikTok for recommending this book to me, ever. I'm never gonna forgive it for this. The only reason why it took me so long to finish Corrupt is because I was a beta reader for this upcoming book and I kind of wanted to focus all of my attention on it because the author did have a due date. But I finished reading Corrupt and let me tell you, I am very wary now of what is on tiktok because of this book now i have some notes here let's just go into some of the things that i wanted to discuss with you in this final update of reading this book first of all i'm glad it's over because oh my gosh 
I didn't think it could get worse. As I read, I was like, there's no way it's going to get worse. And then I read some more and then I said, you know what? No, this is it. There's no way it'll get worse than this. And then I finished the book and I thought, damn, I really thought it wasn't going to get worse until it did. Here are some of the notes that I have here. So some problematic concepts in this book. Minor adult relationships. So at first I was going to give Penelope Douglas a pass for having this minor adult relationship that wasn't sexual or anything. It was just like a friendship, I would call it. I don't even know what you would call what Michael and Erica had at the beginning of the book as like teenagers or whatever. I was gonna give her a pass because I'm like, okay, they're not, they didn't kiss or anything and it's not like sexual or anything until, until I got a ways way in the book and I read the scene that happened in the warehouse, I think. I think it was the warehouse or maybe it was the cathedral. I don't even know. There was a scene and it was Erica and it was Michael and they were like getting hot and heavy. And then Erica was like, oh my God, I want to do this. And then Michael was like, oh my God, me too. But you're like underage. And then she was like, it's okay. Like nothing's going to happen. And me the whole time reading it like, honey, why is this even a scene right now? Like, why is this a scene? I was so confused as to why the author was cool with including that but i mean go off penelope go off it's kind of funny because uh this booktuber actually uploaded this video called a guide to penelope douglas and i watched it last night and i was like girl i love your videos but we're gonna have to agree to disagree on this one because i cannot get it through my head to give this book more than one and a half stars like i can't i can't do it i i can't honey i can't <clears throat> next problematic concept sexual assault pushed under the rug now this is one of the main things that i had a problem with in this book and i think chandler also mentioned in her video that there were scenes that were very strong in this book that were all consensual though and i really did have to disagree with her on that one because oh man some of the things in here were not consensual and i think that's a very bright red flag to look out for in books that make it seem like scenes are consensual when they really aren't i feel like in those cases books are sort of like deceiving you in a way abusive male characters is number three on this guy abusive male characters a focus on michael and elena michael and erica i can't believe i just said that every man in this book was abusive every single one except the concierge people at the apartments they were the only ones that weren't abusive I swear I am not lying, every single man in this book was abusive at one point or another. I don't know if what the author was going for, making every man in the book gross and creepy, but every every one of them, it was just not a fun experience. I think the only cool guy in this book was Noah, and I think people started, people reading this book probably forgot about Noah midway through because they were just involved with the horseman and kai and will and damon and michael and all of them nasty little boys all the men were trash in this which sucks because we didn't have one good male character but except noah i i held hope for noah when the male characters did something that was completely out of line erica literally like acknowledged that it was bad but didn't forget she forgave them so easily and i'm just like girl i get it with the forgiving and stuff but the not forgetting type thing but what do you mean like she literally these men these four men plotted for years against her and bringing her down and just getting revenge on this poor girl who in the end did nothing wrong and she just forgave him. She forgave him so easily. She, these men literally abused her and mentally harmed her in so many different ways. I can't even, I didn't even write them down because I couldn't even name them all. It made it seem like their behavior was okay in the end. Like it was fine that they plotted against her for years and years. And then, oh, whoops, we didn't, we thought it was you. We thought you were the one that put us in prison. So we planned out a year, three years of revenge on you so sorry about that anyway um do you want to go like eat or something like what even i couldn't ship anyone honestly i literally could not i literally did not ship anyone the only people that i really shipped in this book were probably alex and erica 
those were the only two characters in this book that I would have shipped because where was the chemistry between Michael and Erica? We're talking about how they supposedly love each other. Where was the love? And that's funny because that brings me to my other notes section called where is the love? Because where, where is the love? There was no love between these two characters. I know that everyone shows their love to one another in a different way, but girl, they did not have any chemistry. Let me just say, so you know what? Some people probably don't even care what I have to say when it comes to this book. Some people are like, girl, just read it for the steamy scenes and just be done with your life. But I, for the love of bookstagram and book talk and booktube i cannot say enough how much i wanted there to be longing between them two i guess between erica and michael and there was but it was like sexual longing and it wasn't sweet it wasn't like they didn't what did they like about each other the whole time i was reading this i was wondering what did erica and michael like about each other besides their bodies besides the mysterious air around one another and how they're so pulled to one another like please save it for the next person i kept asking myself what did they like about each other did they have their future planned out ahead of them did they have career goals in mind these are the things that i think of when i read a relationship another thing that i wanted to say is that even though there were so much like problematic situations that happened in this there was still a story that was interesting and kept the reader engaged which i think i'm just like that is beyond me because i was suffering while reading this and i still wanted to know what happened next like what is wrong with me you know what the more i think about it i think a lot of people ask themselves that while reading this book something that i was very upset about was erica's character traits because i really liked her character for some reason she actually had the most depth out of any character in this book and i like that they mentioned that she had done fencing ever since she was small but the one thing that i just kept wondering was why that wasn't mentioned more in the book and why it wasn't a stronger character trait and i'm not even gonna be that person and be like ew the steamy scenes were so like too much like they were a lot okay the steamy scenes were a lot but they were steamy sis there was steam coming out of this book like i'm telling you i didn't not like or like them if that's what you're wondering i just saw them as being there and just accepting them for what they were because i couldn't get past the fact that there were so many problematic things happening in this book that it made it hard to enjoy like the sensualness that happened between the characters like i just I couldn't get fully into it, I'm sorry. Also, every time I was reading this book and I kept seeing Trevor's name pop up, um, I just kept thinking of this scene. Hey, honey, good to see you. How you been? Fucking Trevor! I'm rating it 1.5 stars. And the only reason why I'm giving it that 0.5 is because it had an intense story that I was actually interested in reading. Like, there was never a time where I was like, oh, the story's kind of slowing down. Like, I don't want to keep reading it. Like, it's not even worth it. Like, no... I was actually engaged the entire time. The only thing that this book didn't let me down with was the pace because it was at a good pace. Things were happening. They weren't all good all the time. I don't know if I trust TikTok anymore after this. Um, I probably will make another reading vlog of me reading something that TikTok recommended me. It's probably gonna be a Colleen Hoover book. I don't know. A lot of people are saying that Corrupt isn't the right book to begin with and i'm starting to see why i'm starting to see why this wasn't a good penelope douglas book to start with um, a lot of people actually recommend reading punk 57 and birthday girl to start your kick on penelope douglas books i don't know if i'll ever pick up a penelope douglas book again after this if i were to pick up another penelope douglas book it definitely wouldn't be um a part of the devil's night series because Girl, this is a series. There are more, there are more books that come after this. And they are about the rest of the horsemen. I wanted to hate this book really, really badly. And in a sense, I do kind of, I don't hate anything. I just dislike heavily a lot of things. I'm not gonna say that there's no hope for this book because maybe somewhere 
out there, somebody else will enjoy this book. And I know that's gonna happen because a lot of people really rave about this series and really love this series. And you know what? If the characters weren't so abusive towards Erica and towards anyone else, I actually would have enjoyed this book a lot more than I did. And if those scenes of sexual assaults just weren't even included in the book, I probably would have given this book three stars. I would have given this book three stars, but that didn't happen. So here we are giving it 1.5. I'm sorry this wasn't one of my favorites. I held hope. I didn't have super, super high expectations when going into the book and I didn't have super negative ones either. I kind of was just in the middle like, okay, like people say this is good, so we're gonna try it out and maybe, hey, hey, maybe it'll be a good one. Sadly, no, this wasn't it for me. <laughs> um like i said i had a lot of problems with it and i'm sure a lot of people do because i girl i was in the in the one one star review section of goodreads i know what people were saying about this and i'm gonna have to agree i don't know what book i'm gonna be doing a reading vlog on next but it probably isn't gonna be another penelope douglas book let's just be honest it probably isn't i really do want to get on the colleen hoover hype train i know a couple of years ago caleb had a video up where he did a reading vlog on ugly love i think and he didn't have great things to say about it and i love his videos i know he doesn't post a lot now but i still like rewatching his old videos because he's literally hilarious i might do a reading vlog on a colleen hoover book who knows i might not i might pick up a fantasy book i haven't read a fantasy book in a fat minute so i definitely need a fix of fantasy like i really do thank you all for watching this reading vlog i hope you enjoyed and i will see you in the next one